everyone, this is Meg with another Last Gen Review, and today I'm going to be talking about Obscure. Perfect timing too, considering that an Obscure reboot is due for release, I think sometime this year, and I use the term reboot loosely because it really doesn't resemble this game at all. Obscure is influenced heavily by Robert Rodriguez's 1998 horror comedy The Faculty, and it shows. Not so much in a satiric humour kind of way, but in an archetypal 90s American high school kind of way complete with grunge. Lots and lots of grunge. The story is practically mediocre in every way. Think Mary Poppins, only the opposite. There are no real memorable moments in the story or script, no witty humour or exemplary character development to speak of. The writing does nail one thing, however, and that's the simplistic, slang-riddled speech very typical of the teen disease, though I'm not sure how much of that is down to poor writing and or or voice acting. Hey, Josh, get out of our way. But I've got to finish up my story on the basketball team for the Yo, paper. Yo, dog, Kenny, chill out, man. Leave him alone. Come on, let's hit the showers. One thing that I will say about the story is that it successfully creates an air of mystery through evidence scattered throughout the school. I would go so far as to say that discovering old teaching files and rifling through the faculty offices really felt like a naughty kind of treat, and one that brought the story to life in ways that the writing, cutscenes, and dialogues did not. This mystery doesn't quite carry the story, but it acts as a nice diversion, I think. Though the tagline is, in school they never teach you the things you wanted to know about. My favourite theme in this game is that you don't know your teachers. Or would you really want to? As a teen, it rarely crosses your mind that teachers have a life outside of the school. But they do. And one has to wonder what they get up to. I'm not saying every principal is a homicidal scientist. But presenting teachers as people with pasts, flaws and shortcomings never fails to offer an interesting perspective. All in all, the story of Obscure is pulp, <laughs> like most teen horror, so it won't be winning any points in the popularity or originality contests, but it's intriguing enough to keep you engaged. Gameplay features a heavy rain-esque device. Characters can die, but the story moves on regardless with the player instead taking on the remaining characters to finish the game. This was original at the time, but vastly underutilised here. It adds little to no pressure, considering the characters aren't at all precious to you, and if you saved regularly enough, you could just go back and try again without losing anybody. However, there is a quirky sort of tag team mechanic. Players can swap characters at any point, barring combat situations. Though you do work as a standard twosome, a role that can be filled by another player and or AI, but you can take control of both in single player. It's pretty standard, in the sense that you can exchange weapons and items, and you can return to the gathering area to change up your team. What really brings this feature to life is the characters each have their own skill sets. You'll see just how handy this mechanic is as the game increases in difficulty and varies up its challenges. Unfortunately, this means you'll be spending a lot of time fussing around with your items and changing up your team, and this would be okay if accessing items and combining pickups wasn't such a long-winded affair. Selecting your item, combining it, then selecting it again before selecting to use is a pain in the keister, but this is a kind of common feature of last-gen survival horrors, and things are made a little easier by a give-all option in the item menu and gathering, as I said before, via the map. It cuts down on a lot of time spent. My one big gripe with this presto change mechanic is that when your duo dies and the player is placed in the shoes of the next character in line, all previously owned items completely vanish. You can gain these back by way of looting, but this isn't always immediately possible as I found out in the final boss battle, and the game doesn't always accommodate stealthy play. Now onto combat. Gun-based combat is surprisingly smooth. Characters auto-aim and seldom miss, which makes for a nice surprise, considering the genre. You also pick up not just pistols, but light grenades. I say light uh, in the sense of sunlight, as opposed to the opposite of heavy. And shotguns too, though what a shotgun would be doing in a high school is totally beyond me. The same can't really be said for standard weapons, such as the baseball bat. I avoided using it for the simple reason that hitting enemies was a 50-50 clunky affair. Obscure is chock full of interesting gameplay ideas and mechanics, but the execution often misses the mark. Still, the gameplay and varying difficulties really freshen up the experience, and it isn't so poorly made that it's completely unenjoyable. 
Considering that the game was released roughly a decade ago now, it hasn't aged that badly. The somewhat foggy visual quality covers a multitude of sins, <laughs> making common last generation veins such as ghosting a non-existent issue. Now like many last gen survival horror games before and after it, Obscure utilises fixed camera angles. And considering how heavily it relies on exploration, it really is more of a hindrance than a help, by no means an unwelcome technique in other games. It needlessly muddies things in Obscure, it removes any chances of bumpy camera work, but it ultimately makes gameplay frustrating. And now that I've said that, I think I probably should have put that in the gameplay section, but oh well, it's in the visuals now! As far as the visual style is concerned, you can tell that Obscure was developed in France. Though, as I said before, the faculty was the main inspiration for this game. It has a distinctly European Gothic visual style to its environments. From the opening sequence, you can see that Obscure is very much a European take on an American high school. This is by no means a problem, it actually adds a kind of off-balance quality to it, which never hurts in a genre that relies so much on atmosphere. This is the second time I've heard Olivier's work, and twice now he's gravitated towards a choral-based score, which isn't surprising considering how exquisitely he applies these choruses. To those of you who are unaware, Olivier was the genius behind the 2008 Alone in the Dark score that was performed by the Bulgarian Voices Choir. It almost seems a little out of place at first, but it really grows on you after a while, and I think it creates an interesting kind of juxtaposition. Olivier also mixes and skews these choruses later on in game, which I thought was really great. The score does offer some symphonic tracks to add tension, but these really weren't my favourite, and they weren't memorable either. Obscure has very little in the way of ambient tracks. It is literally either full on or full off, with very little in between. But the sound effects were great though, and really, really put you on edge. The soundtrack also features music by Sum41 and Span. I guess this was supposed to further establish the game as a teen horror by catering to their target audience. And though the songs they chose were really great, I have nothing against Sum41 or Span, I'm still not quite understanding why it's such a big deal. If you look up anything to do with Obscure, you will most likely see their names mentioned. I don't know, I'm not really getting that. So am I still for this Obscure is a surprisingly short game lasting around five to six hours. I'll let you decide if that's a good or a bad thing. Having played both single player and two player co-op, I have to say I like both equally, and I say this because neither mode really brings too much extra to the overall experience, and bizarrely suffer most of the same problems. If anything, the two-player co-op actually causes more issues, and I think it would have really benefited greatly from a split-screen feature. I like that the game offers a handful of extras, such as feature ads and music videos upon completion. Finish the game on different modes, and you can unlock even more bonuses. All in all, Obscure is quite fun. Okay, the story's a little bland, the gameplay just falls short, never really taking full advantage of its very unique mechanics, and despite all the exploration involved, the game only lasts for a few hours. But it doesn't really suffer too much from these negatives, because Obscure is very quirky and it never takes itself too seriously, and because of this, you just can't help but be a little bit charmed by it. I guess the game really does do what it says on the tin, or box, as in this case. Obscure really is the most apropos word to describe it. So that was it, uh, I hope you enjoyed the review, thank you for watching, and please feel free to leave your comments and opinions on Obscure in the section below. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in my next video, which will be a current release game review. <laughs> Bye!